Are you looking for a rod and reel to throw swim jigs and spinner baits on? Well, I've got a suggestion for you. Hi, my name's Ethan. I'm a brand ambassador for Discount Tackle, and I love throwing spinner baits and swim jigs. Both of these types of lures are so good for triggering reaction bites and really chasing actively feeding fish. And I've been fishing these things for a long time, and I've thrown them on a lot of rod and reels, but I tell you what, I've got one now that I think is the perfect rod and reel for both swim jigs and spinner baits. Today, I'm going to talk about the rod, the reel, and the line. So let's get started with the reel. The reel is the most simple part. You don't have to necessarily get a specific brand or type of reel. Realistically, what I'm looking for here is a mid to high speed reel. For me, I like a 6-3 to 1. It forces me to slow down just a little bit, so that way I'm not overworking my bait. That being said, you can totally use a 7 to 1 or other high speed reel as well. Usually when I'm working spinner baits and swim jigs, I'm trying to draw reaction bites, so I want to reel it pretty quick, but at the same time, I want the opportunity to slow myself down and really focus in on some of those lethargic fish. My specific reel of choice is actually a Daiwa Tatula Elite. It's just such a good reel. It's got a good strong drag, but at the same time, I can bomb these things a country mile. Okay, so now that we talked about the reel, let's talk about the line. When it comes to bass fishing, you've really got three main choices. You can go with monofilament, braided line, or fluorocarbon. What I would tell you is you should probably stick to either braid or fluorocarbon. Monofilament has a lot of stretch, and if you make a long cast and try to bury the hook on a spinnerbait or a swim jig, you're probably gonna have a hard time. If you're fishing around a lot of heavy cover and a lot of vegetation, braid is gonna be fine for you, but for me personally, I like fluorocarbon. I would say any size from 12 to 15 is gonna be great. For me, I choose 14 pound test, and it just seems to be the perfect in-between. It's strong enough to pull them out of cover, but at the same time, it's low enough diameter to where it basically is invisible underwater. Okay, we covered down on the reel, we covered down on the line, but now let's get into the rod. This is probably the meat of today's video. The rod is such a key component. And before I even get started, I wanna say one thing. Everybody's got personal preferences with their gear. So what I say might not be exact for you, but it's gonna be close. Before I get to length of rod, I'm gonna talk about the specs. I like a medium heavy, fast action. Medium heavy allows me to have the power to pull fish out of cover, and when I fish spinner baits and swim jigs, I often am throwing them around cover. So you really wanna have a little bit of power. The other thing is, most spinner baits and swim jigs have a pretty heavy gauge hook. When a fishing lure has a heavier gauge hook, it requires a little bit more power to bury it in the fish's mouth. And that's exactly why a medium heavy for me is the perfect power. And then when it comes to action, like I said, I like fast. It is absolutely my favorite when it comes to bass fishing for almost every lure. For spinner baits and swim jigs, as mentioned, they've got a heavy hook on them and you might make a long cast and you really want to be able to bury that hook. If your rod is too moderate, you might find that you're not going to get the hookups that you're looking for. And then extra fast for me is just a little too fast because I like to give them a chance to kind of take that bait down before setting the hook too hard. So if you have that extra fast tip, you might end up actually pulling the lure out of the fish's mouth before they had a chance to take it. Okay, so let's get into length a little bit here. What I can tell you is that length is going to vary depending on your fishing style. For me, I use a six foot 10 and I genuinely believe it is the perfect length for me. You can go as low as six foot six if you tend to be really cover oriented and want to focus in on more precise casts. A six foot six is going to be pretty short, so you're not going to be able to bury that hook as well on long casts. On the flip side, you could step it up to a seven foot or a seven one to make further casts and really be able to bury that hook on a long, long cast. So I guess my suggestion would be you really need to look in the mirror and identify what kind of fisherman you are. For me, I'm a kayak angler, so I don't want to go super long on my rod. Six ten is great. It's short enough to where it allows me to get it in under cover. It allows me to skip an under docks, but it's long enough to where I can bury the hook on a long cast when I'm fishing a weed line. If you tend to fish swim jigs and spinner baits on short casts around cover, I would go shorter. If you tend to fish them around grass flats in open water, I'd probably go a little longer. I know that's not a specific answer, but like I said, everybody's got a different style and everybody's got different preferences. I'm telling you what, I don't think you can go wrong with 610 though. Okay, I've been rambling at you long enough. Let's get started fishing and I'll talk about other things that I like to do when spinner bait and swim jig fishing. Hopefully we can catch a bass. I don't have a ton of time, but Wish me luck. Okay, I'm gonna actually go ahead and start with this War Eagle Finesse Spinner Bait. It's a little bit smaller profile, but I figure in this clear water, it's gonna do a good job of matching all the small bait fish in here. Today is decent conditions for swim jigs and spinner baits. We are in the fall and the fish should be feeding aggressively. I wish it was a little bit lower light conditions. The wind's not as high as I would like, and the sun is definitely high in the sky as well. That said, I figure if I cover a lot of water, I might just catch one, who knows. There's a ton of grass in this lake, and I'll tell you what, having some backbone on your rod allows you to kind of rip that spinnerbait or swim jig free. What I really love about this six foot 10 rod is I can still cast it as far as I'll ever need, and even if they bite at the end of 
the cast. I usually can set the hook pretty darn well with it. But at the same time, it gives me the ability to really skip under docks and whatnot. And I tell you what, that is so crucial with these baits. I live in Michigan and dock fishing is definitely relevant in a lot of the inland lakes that I fish. And a swim jig is honestly one of the best baits that you can possibly use when fishing around docks. The reason that this equipment works so well for both is when you look at a swim jig and a spinnerbait, they're virtually the same thing. The only difference is that there's a wire arm with the blades for a spinnerbait, whereas you're going to tie right to the head on a swim jig, and then it's going to have that weed guard. So they're very similar. They require a similar hook set, and uh, they're usually about the same size too. I tell you what, the first time I ever picked up this exact rod and reel, I went out and I actually caught a surprise drum on the thing. And this was the biggest drum I've ever caught in my life. I actually have it on video, so I'll link that in the description below. The second I caught that fish, I realized this thing has plenty of power. If I can haul in a giant drum that big, I'm gonna be just fine when it comes to bass fishing. Water's awfully clear, so I'm just reeling it pretty darn hard and I'm twitching it pretty hard whenever it starts touching grass. That a fish? Yes, it is. It's a nice fish. Kinda caught me off guard there. It was right on that weed line. Feels like a good one. Feels like a real good one, actually. This is a nice, pleasant surprise. All right. And that, my friends, is why it's crucial to use a trailer hook. Look at that. Not even close to getting a normal hook. That is why it's crucial to use a trailer hook. Man, I tell you what, that rod just does so well with these bass when they hit the spinnerbait. I do not lose fish on this rod. I love it. You know what? That fires me up, man. Like I said, this is just that War Eagle Mike McClellan finesse spinnerbait. It's like a 5 16th ounce. It's pretty small. This really is one of my confident spinnerbaits. What I really like about it, the fact that it's got that Indiana and Colorado blade, and then because it's so light, I can keep it really high in the water column. And there is a ton of grass in here, like I said. So I just want to keep this right above the weed line. And any fish that are hunkered down in there, look up, see it, and they smash it. That fish really was a perfect reminder of why you need trailer hooks. I'm definitely going to link trailer hooks in the description below so please make sure to pick some of those up if you don't have them yet they're crucial for spinnerbait fishing all right as much as i'd love to keep chucking this spinnerbait and chasing bass and i do believe i could probably catch more i need to get home and cook dinner so i'm gonna have to leave that said i hope you enjoyed today's video and more importantly i hope you're confident that you can go out and pick up the right rod and reel for swim jig and spinnerbait fishing if you have any further questions make sure to drop them in the comments below we will help as best we can thanks again tight lines we'll catch you next time